What's up guys, it's Dwayne from mountainbuck.com where we go from backyard to backwoods. And guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Throw and Grow food plot video. This is part two. And in part one, you might remember, I test grew 10 of the most popular and best-selling throw and grow food plot products on the market today. I had 10 planter boxes. I checked what was in the bags. I checked the seeds. I checked how long they germinated. And we watched their progress over a 30-day period. If you guys haven't seen that video, you might want to check that out. It's super interesting. So in this video, what we're doing is days 31 through day 60 to see how these products continue to grow and if they thrived or if they died and what happened. I also put these planters up on the hill behind my house, which is available for deer and turkeys and bear and all kinds of stuff to come in. I wanted to see if any deer or turkey came in and ate that stuff. I thought it'd be pretty interesting. We did have some action. We had some animals come in and we'll talk you through that. So guys, if you haven't hooked me up and hit subscribe yet, please do so. Now let's check out some of the time-lapse footage and ultimately culminate with that 60-day close-up to see how these things progressed over a 60-day time period. Check this out, guys. On night 38, I had two bears come in, and then I had the big mom come in, and then she just totally stomped on my hot spot there. That was pretty crazy. We also saw a coyote on night 40. And of course we had some raccoons. And here's what's interesting. On day 45, a doe stopped in. It looks like she rooted around in that throne grow from Evolved Habitat Harvest. It looks like she's eating something. She definitely rooted around the dirt, but the video is foggy and my camera only picked up three seconds but still super interesting. So we finally made it to day 60 and that extra 30 days has really paid off for some of these throw and grow products. Let's start with the throw and grow from Evolved Harvest. And you can see that ryegrass continues to grow and looks healthy and some of those clovers are slowly coming in there. Next up we have the throw and grow extreme and it looks like we have some healthier clovers in this section here, healthier clovers and some brassica, of course mixed in with that ryegrass. Next up is Honey Hole, and this one is interesting to me. 
this was doing really well through 30 days. And then when I moved it up here, I don't know if it's the shadier spot or if it doesn't have enough nutrients, but I saw the leaves kind of go pink. So this is where that fertilizer might come in handy, guys. And I didn't fertilize or use lime or anything on this stuff over the 60 day period. Uh, but we can see the honey hole kind of struggling here. And I'm guessing it's due to lack of nutrients. Um, I will say that the honey hole is predominantly brassicas. So just being that one type of crop uh, might be something to consider. Uh, you might want to go with a blend just in case one of those crops, the soil conditions aren't right for it and it doesn't grow very well. You have other stuff kind of growing and backing it up. You might have some clovers or oats or wheat or something coming through there where you know, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. So let's check out no plow. And no plow is doing really well. The clovers, brassica, radish, and ryegrass are all doing great. And keep in mind, this mix is great for areas that just get three to four hours of sunlight. Maybe you have broken sunlight coming through the trees. You're not in a full sun area. This no plow might be what you're looking for. Let's check out Secret Spot and check this out, guys. Look at our Secret Spot mix. It's looking like a mini forest up there with those oats, clover, and brassicas. This stuff is growing up great and one of my previous favorites from planting last year. I really liked Secret Spot. Now how about some no BS? You gotta love that name. This is our no filler, no BS mix. And those winter oats are growing up super strong along with that clover, brassicas, and chicory. That brings us to Hot Chick, another cool name from Domain. And Hot Chick here has really developed quite a bit in the last 30 days. We did see it kind of slowly grow over those first 30 day period, but specifically the red and white clover is growing up very nicely here, but also the chicory is coming in as well. That brings up Hot Spot. And again, my apologies to Biologic. I did not see that seed mix label on the bottom of the bag. All the other bags with the products that had the seed mix labels were on the back and they're very easy to see. And I didn't see it, so I apologize. But let's check this out. This stuff continues to crush it, mostly with that wheat and ryegrass, but this stuff is super tall and super full and it looks fantastic. Next up, we have foundation clover and this is looking really full and lush with that five varieties of different clovers, including two varieties of Ladino clovers, crimson, red, and arrow leaf clovers. Finally, we have buck brunch. Here you can see it continues to thrive. That ryegrass is performing really well. We also have that wheat in there growing up nicely. Some brassica and clovers coming in. So if you're like me and you're planning on planting a throw and grow food plot in mid-August, 60 days out from there is mid-October, right about where you want to be for archery season. The plants will continue to grow and establish themselves into rifle season in November, providing the conditions are right for them. Guys, I hope part two of this video provided some additional insights for you when you make your decisions on growing and purchasing your throw and grow food plots. As always, guys, the links to the ads we talked about are in the description below. Hook me up and hit subscribe. Thank you guys so much for hanging out, and we'll see you on the next one.